Okay man look. It's clear you don't fully understand much about how render engines work so I'll give you a better idea of what goes on. When you are in a virtual 3D environment, what is displayed on your screen is not the only thing that is rendered, if that was the case it would render a brand new scene every time you change a view, look backwards or side to side, or do anything else that requires the camera to move. If you look behind you and there is a tree, that tree does not disappear when you let go of the right stick and normal the camera. The world around you is being rendered at all times. Some systems have better hardware and optimized better than others which allows for the engine to render more of what's called a draw distance. They could have simply made the same view that is used when you pull down on the right stick and look behind, mirror, the output, add a slight blur, and you now have a mirrored view. Games have been doing this for years. Gran Turismo 3, Burnout 3, these are games dating back to PS3 days. Even had games before this like original Splinter Cell that had functional mirrors. Don't try to look smart when you just have no clue what you're talking about. Yes it will add slightly to the graphical resources needed, but just a mere fraction of a smidge to that of what you are suggesting. There's plenty they could sacrifice like the absolutely ridiculous ghost cars that make absolutely no sense in having in the game. Holy shit guys, water is actually psychoactive. I was staying up pretty late at night, as usual, uni student things, on math caffeine and cholinergics, energy drinks basically, feeling pretty sleepy and tired despite just freshly dosing on both. And then guess what, I randomly decided to chug down two full cups of normal water, I rarely drink plain water, and within seconds I felt wide fucking awake like meth has never made me. Holy shit who knew water had psychoactive properties even stronger than meth. I'm going to start drinking a lot of water now. Everyone needs to know this. Listen up, and listen carefully. I get it, you're all worked up about this, but let me set the record straight. Water is nothing but plain old H2O. It's not some mind-altering substance that'll get you high. So drop your delusions right now. You may be feeling all perky after gulping down some water, but let's get real here. That boost you think you're getting is more likely due to common sense factors. For starters, staying hydrated can combat that sluggishness and exhaustion caused by dehydration. It's not rocket science, it's just common sense. Oh, and don't even get me started on the placebo effect. The power of suggestion can mess with your head, my friend. So if you convinced yourself that water is some magical elixir that'll make you alert, well, surprise, surprise. You're just fooling yourself. Look, I'm all for staying hydrated, alright? It's good for your health, no doubt about it. But don't go around spreading the nonsense that water is on par with hardcore drugs like methamphetamine. That's just plain ridiculous. So, drink your water, feel refreshed, and stop with the wild claims. Water is not some mind-altering substance, so get a grip. I think I'm sexually attracted to my walls. The strong masculine sturdiness of the wood and the foundation seems like it could push me up against itself and then cradle my face in a domineering but tender way as I softly exhale. The soft feminine curves of the peeling wallpaper seemingly dare me to picture what's underneath. As though it's saying, I know it's forbidden, but you know you want to. Take off my wrapping, become one with my drywall. Honestly, my walls are so hot. And I don't know if it's a gender thing but for some reason all the guys are saying that it really doesn't work, going as far to say that my kick GF is fake or a catfish, whatever that means. They say no women get turned on by this. I think they're full of it. I mean, when I see a big veiny wiener, I certainly stop to stare. Maybe my little stinker, my nickname for it, is just better than theirs. I believe without finding a goth girl my mental health will continue to plummet and I'm afraid to know what I'm capable of if that happens. I may have to look into transferring if this issue does not get resolved. Any tips are much appreciated, thanks. I fucking love this subreddit. Every day after a long day from work, I come home and check out all the new posts on this sub and I guarantee you that almost all these posts are funny as hell. Either that or somewhat interesting. People say that the stuff we make is unfunny, unoriginal, repetitive, and one of the worst subreddits, but that is just a load of baloney. I don't care what they think of us. This sub is great. Not just great, 
but the best. As long as we all think so as well without any doubts, this sup will remain as wonderful as it will be in the future. This is what I personally think about this subreddit. If you don't think so, then it's fine. I only hope that we get more forced memes and more posters to post more forced memes so that this sub can be faster. That's the only thing I hope for. Other than that, this place is hands down the nicest place as well. Heck, if someone new came in, we would be there to greet the new fellow, while other subs be mean to scare them off. If anything, all the newcomers should be welcomed here so they can get their privilege and fortune checked as soon as possible so they can fit in with the bunch easily. I don't know what else to say, except that I love you guys. Thank you for making this subreddit nice. Listen up, you pathetic excuse for a human being. I've had enough of your delusional worship of Pyrocynical. Let me make it crystal clear for you, Pyrocynical is nothing but a useless mop head. I genuinely wish Pyrocynical would burn in the fiery depths of hell where he truly belongs. It wouldn't surprise me if he completely abandoned his main channel and started spewing garbage about anime and furry porn artists. I bet you he's even the one commissioning all that disgusting inflation porn on Twitter. He's a sick and twisted individual. Oh, let's not forget that he's just a mindless follower of other commentary YouTubers. He has no originality and adds absolutely nothing of value to the platform. And don't you dare think for a second that we will ever have a reason to celebrate him because we won't. The hatred towards him will endure forever. That pathetic game, Cruelty Squad, is definitely not what we need. I would much rather see Pyrocynical stop polluting the internet with his slop channel and instead produce just one 10 minute video of actual quality on his main channel per year. And let's not even get started on his so-called job of shamelessly exploiting his young and impressionable audience for views. So, take your blind admiration elsewhere, because nobody here has any room or patience for your pyrocynical loving nonsense. Open your eyes and see him for the talentless fraud that he really is. My lady, I implore you to grace me with a modicum of your feminine essence. It would be of little trouble for you and would bring me much joy and delight. Please, let me have a glance at your delicates. Asterisk contents. I am no smooth talker like those other guys. I speak from the heart. I can see you are a kind, compassionate woman who would take pity on a meek, downtrodden soul like mine. I simply want to partake of your beauty. Surely you could spare just a mere moment in my presence. Is that so much to ask? Do I not deserve a drop of your grace? Is that not to be found in your feminine essence? I understand that, at first glance, my request may seem rather crass, but I assure you, my lady, that is not the case. I do not make this plea to satisfy some vile carnal desire. Rather, it is but a humble manifestation of my reverence for you, your femininity and the beauty you possess in abundance. All I ask is for a brief glimpse into your intimate feminine mysteries. To gaze upon that most sacred of temples, to see what wonders lie within, would be the fulfillment of all of my desires, the crowning achievement of my life. And so, it is my sincere hope, my lady, that you will allow me this brief privilege. I am a gentleman of refined tastes, who merely desires the slightest glimpse of your feminine essence. It would be the fulfillment of all of my dreams, and it is all I need to make this life worth living. I await your response with bated breath. Yo, check it, my lady. I'ma keep it real with you, no need for fancy words or smooth talking. I see you, girls kind, compassionate, and full of grace. I ain't like them other dudes, fronting and playing games. I'm coming straight from the heart, no lies or deceit. All I'm a skin for is a moment of your precious time, just a glimpse into your world. Not cause I'm some perverted fool, but cause I respect you, admire your beauty. I ain't trying to satisfy no carnal desires, nah, this is about reverence, admiration for your femininity, and the true essence of your being. I understand my request might come off a bit rude, but trust me, I ain't like the mother cats. This ain't about lust, it's about witnessing your secret sanctuary, the wonders that lie within. It's something I've dreamt of, the ultimate goal in my life. So, my lady, I hope you feel me. I'm a gentleman, know how to appreciate the finer things, and all I'm a skin for is a glimpse, a taste of your feminine essence. 
It'd be the pinnacle of my existence, the reason to keep on living. I'll be here waiting, holding my breath, hoping you'll grant me this rare privilege. Yo, hit me back when you're ready. Here's my proof, it's undeniable. This is a good one. I'm 52 years old and I have massive balls. They are huge. For real. I had to look into getting some kind of underwear that could cut them without revealing a giant bulge in all my jeans. I mean it's huge. My balls are literally visible. It's weird man I hate it. I wanted a solution but I wasn't even sure if help existed. I googled it. Sure enough. Men's underwear ball hammocks exist. So I bought some and this is exactly what I needed so I bought several different brands to find the right fit. Lo and behold my prayers are answered, Saks ball hammocks exist and exactly what I needed and ultimately the brand I settled on. They fit, feel, and look great. Mind you I have never heard of anything like this. I didn't even know it existed. This is all very recent by the way. This happened within the last couple days. Please also know that I am completely unplugged from basically all sources of entertainment these days. I'm writing this in front of a camp stove on my patio. It's a mini bonfire. I've been enjoying them for months. Every night. Sometimes my wife joins me. Sometimes not. But I refuse to be programmed by my TV. No Netflix sports movies. Absolutely no news at all. It's all programming and I refuse to take part. I'm living life unplugged from the matrix but find that I'm still taking part in order to maintain a life I'm just going through the motions as I see it unfold. Surely I'm being programmed in ways too, I'm on reddit posting from my phone, there's no escaping the programming without others. There's only one way that I can think of, to get out. Stop working, paying taxes, using currency and build a community of people who live off the land and barter with each other in the most prosperous ways. It's the way we should be living as a species with a soul capable of offering compassion. We should be living off the land in friendly communities that support each in various ways with shared access to food, water and shelter. Not by government control but by the golden rule. Greed has ruined us. Sense of self is the ruler of this world, the original sin. That night I'm sitting in a bar with a couple friends and the games are on and I'm just kinda watching and my mind was literally blown when I saw an ad for the very same product I had recently discovered existed. I bought this pair but didn't like them. How could they possibly be targeting me with a commercial this tiny company paid millions of dollars for to advertise some cheap shit made in China underwear I bought off Amazon a week prior? It's not possible. There is no way that could happen. They let this one slide. It just proves the infallibility of the programmers to make such a mistake. It's a simulation. Dude yes. Great reply. My dad died in June. I wasn't close to him at all. The caretaker at the funeral home said my dad had the biggest balls he'd ever seen. Your dad had the biggest testicles I have ever seen on a man. I always thought I had huge balls, but that's when I knew. It's in my genes. That's when I really started noticing. I truly believe your post has merit. Hi all. Long time lurker and first time poster and oh boy do I have a biggie. I'm deeply in love with my sister who is a trusting diplomat and is also the mother to my four children. Things are going great and I've never been happier. However, I got back from a hard year's graft invading my fellow neighbor's land and my sister is pregnant. I've been away for 12 months and 14 days. My brother is a real good looking lad and I think he's to blame. What happens if the baby isn't mine? Can I ever love and trust another again? What do I do? What would you do? Appreciate your time. TLDR, my sister, soulmate, lover and best friend is pregnant. I have been away for 12 months. Help. You're the asshole. Your sister your rules. I fucking hate all of the NTA forward slash YTA comments. Why are you all so obsessed with this type of response? It does not bring out to the table anything particularly interesting nor intelligent. It is only there to anger all of the Redditors. I truly believe that anybody who is so utterly deranged to invent new variations of the same shitpost should be skinned alive and hanged.
Also please note that this is a personal opinion and should not be used against me at any time as the actions described above are just my imaginations. I would have not partaken such acts on any occasion. I am just enraged by the humongous, gigantous even, amount of posts like these with content written by an 11 year old. If you are of that kind, I will not put it lightly, and to quote LTG, you should kill yourself. Now. Be but this is funny I love seeing posts like this, oh lord, why did this all happen? NTA your post your rules, fuck you. There are no other stronger words rather than fuck you. I cannot comprehend your mindset, you degenerates. You little gremlins who just sit there, 24-7 in front of your screen, constantly refreshing the subreddit to check if any lost individual was unfortunate to send an AMTA post directly into your inbox, filled to the brim with carefully picked out posts, thousands of messages, all of the same type, all of them following a certain pattern. All of it for you, you green fucking goblins, to just respond with NTA, your insert any word in here, your rules. Are you happy? Are you fucking happy after obliging the system? You know what? Shut up. I'm tired of hearing about your problems you have no idea how hard it is being a boy, having boy periods and boy streeting every month. Every single time I let the homies boy bang my boy pussy I have to take boy control and worry about getting boy pregnant with a boy baby. And don't even get me started on that. I have delivered three boy babies through my boy pussy. You have no idea how hard it is. My boy cervix and boy uterus, prostate, is absolutely boy destroyed. Boy babies require twice as much attention and you can only feed them boy milk, and that's not including the boy stretch marks. Once boy babies grow up you need to help them get into boy college and then just hope they'll be gay so they can have hot boy sex with other boys. On top of that you should be indoctrinating them into the boy church and worship boy. You wouldn't want them to be boy theists, would you? So shut up. You women have no idea how hard it actually is to be a boy in this anti-boy world. That's it, I have fucking had it.